Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I get to interview my friend, Mindy Anderson. We are new friends, and I think you're going to love this interview. Not only does she have a background in the military, and she's going to talk about that in terms of career, but also motherhood, but you also get to hear her journey into the private arena in consulting. And then she started an organization that really is her passion and fuels her. And I think that as you listen to the podcast, you're going to hear all of these pieces that you'll relate to different parts of. Um, You're really going to enjoy this one. So welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Thank you for being here with me. Absolutely. It's been fun trying to get both of our calendars to connect. <laughs> so I'm so glad yes. that we did this, even though it's evening. Nobody else knows that, but it's evening. Uh, <laughs> yes. I feel like I should go buy a lottery ticket today because we're like, we finally found the time to come together. You know, I love that, though, because you're just, yeah, you have so many awesome things going on. So I do. Very so will you, um, will you start out by talking about your family? So yeah, who you are as a mom, and then we'll go into your, you know, what you do for a profession. Yeah, absolutely. So I was born and raised in New York and joined the military, and that's where I met my husband down in Louisiana. Uh, we had our first daughter. She's 19, and uh, we traveled around the military for a while, and then we decided uh, we loved Idaho. It was one of our assignments. We were at Mountain Home Air Force Base, and they kept on sending us to the south for some reason. And uh, we just, he's from California, I'm from New York, and Idaho really blended both of those, um, our our homes together, and we just really loved Idaho. So we decided we'd come back here and um, transition into the Guard. And so my husband and I served 12 years active duty and then 10 years in um, the Idaho Air National Guard. And then almost six years ago to the day tomorrow, we had our second daughter, And so um, she's the only one in our family that's an Idaho native. And uh, we're hoping to continue that legacy here in Idaho with her. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, so we're going to go into what you do now, but maybe talk a little bit about being in the military military. and then in the guard. Yeah. What, because it's different as a female. It is. Yeah. Yes. Well, my first job when I went into the military, uh, I went I, I went into the radio operator career field for the very wrong reasons. I went into radio operator uh, because it was the quickest tech school, and I heard Mississippi was a lot of fun. And those were the reasons why I made my decision. Uh, so being a young person, um, I grew up in a foster home, uh, tried to go to college. That didn't work, and then thought, I'm just going to go into the military. Maybe that will help me get on a straight path. And um, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, So, but what I didn't realize is that I was going to be a mostly uh, male-dominated field because, um, you know, in the communications field and IT, it's mostly males. And so I think part of my hardships that I had was when I came into the military, I brought a little bit of baggage with me from living in a foster home and trying to figure out life. And so my emotions were definitely all over the place. And being in a male-dominated career field, it was really challenging to express my emotions. And also, you know, I'm in the military now, so I have to be strong. And so um, I I quickly transitioned, though, into medical because I really just love being in the medical field and wanted to to learn more about that. And so that's really where I did did my career. And uh, that actually worked out much better because that's a female-dominated uh, space in the military and in the civilian healthcare field too. Um, but I've just really enjoyed uh, being in, in medical. But what I do now, um, as I'm getting ready to retire in June, June 3rd, my husband and I are doing a dual retirement ceremony at Gowan Fields. And uh, we're going to retire and head off to Cascade. And so the 19 year old's going to stay here and be a city girl, and the five year old's going to be a rural Idaho girl. And and uh, we're really excited about the next chapter of our life. 
And I want to talk about starting the Veterans Chamber, but I want to ask a question about what you just said. Um, you do a lot of emotional intelligence work. I do. And do mm -hmm. you think that that started back when you were in that male-dominated environment? Because as you were talking about it, I was thinking, oh, that's probably where that spark happened it for is. you. It is because becoming an emotional intelligence trainer with Talent Smart through my military career and then utilizing that in my business too, as well as a consulting and coaching business, uh, I've had the opportunity over the last six years to do a reflection on my life and really see and make the correlation between my experience growing up as a child and how I was handling my own emotions or other people's emotions mm -hmm. that just was a complete uh, mindset shift for me. And, you know, once I saw how uh, completely life-changing that could be for me, I just grew a passion for wanting to be able to share that with other people and helping them to see when we're growing up as a child, our experiences carry into our adult life. And if not, they mold and shape who we are. But most importantly, they mold and shape how we handle and manage emotions too as well. So mm -hmm. it's been a lot of fun. So you you started that in the military. Because I, I it's so funny because I know you as a civilian, mm -hmm. right? right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know most of your path has been in the military. But so you mm -hmm. started that coaching while you were still active. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I decided in the guard, because um, as a guardsman, you can either be full-time active guard or you can be part-time weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I wanted to be weekend warrior and start my own business. But really what I was trying to do was prepare myself for retirement and be doing what I really wanted to do when mm -hmm. I grew up. Uh, because, you know, we, we figure things out all along the way. But, you know, as we start to get older, we really, really see, you know, what we're good at, what we want to do. And I just wanted to use my experiences and put my talents and treasures into something that it was going to be meaningful for me for, you know, the next chapter. So I started Maximize Solutions Consulting and Coaching a couple of years ago to take all of what I've been recognized for as far as what I'm talented at and what I'm good at and what my skills are mm -hmm. and put that into uh, consulting and coaching business. So the consulting side is organizational essentially. And then the coaching side is the professional development, emotional intelligence, facilitation, different uh, leadership courses. And then you layer on top of that, the fact that you started <laughs> the veterans chamber. So, so, <laughs> So talk I about did. that for a second. Yes. So I was doing more reflection through this emotional intelligence journey that I've been on. And I, as I was reflecting on um, one of the things that I see a lot of time with the military is that they lose their identity when they leave because it is an identity. I mean, it's something that people don't have that they, you know, have to separate from. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started trying to um, explore how do I keep my military identity when I leave the military? And um, I didn't want to, to not have a connection to the military community. And so when I started looking at, you know, what would that look like and, and how could I create that space um, you know, I looked at some models and then looked at some of the struggles I faced in my business, uh, buying a house. I had a terrible experience buying a house where a mortgage company said they've worked with VA home loans and they never did. And we almost lost a house because of it. So I just looked at all my experiences in the military and the disconnects between the community I live in, because that's where the military lives, is actually in the community, and realized that there really isn't a network that can catch people. Um, and so uh, I wanted to start an organization that would just be a network hub that would bridge the gaps between the Idaho community and the military community and really bring them together because they need each other. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's no organizations in the state of Idaho that is um, a, a network navigation hub like ours. Um, so we're, we're deeply rooted. We're a veteran service organization, but we're deeply rooted and embedded in the Idaho community because that's where we need the most support with the military community is getting them connected. And you can't connect people without building relationships and having a network established mm -hmm. and making it more inviting and comfortable um, so that people can find this place where they can still feel connected to the military 
and not lose a part of their identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've done such an amazing job just in the short time that I've known you, which hasn't been that long, actually. I was thinking about this as I was coming into the podcast. I was thinking, wow, I feel like I've learned so much about you. And a lot of that has been from people that surround you, Mm -hmm. that speak of you. And so you have a really, really strong connection to those that I've met, which I think speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Well, you talk about motherhood. So, you know, I, I oftentimes interview women that have built businesses. You've built a military career and now a business. Mm -hmm. So I think you have these really interesting dynamics and you had one child with one and one child with another. (laughs) So contrast that for me. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. So that has definitely been an adjustment. Um, I didn't realize um, having my second so late in my career would um, be a struggle or a challenge to be able to balance. And, um, you know, it's, it's my daughter, my 19 year old grew up as a military brat and we had way different conversations than the conversations or the things that my, my five-year-old's experiencing now. And I think part of what I struggle with uh, just as a military mom and a military wife, uh, my husband being active duty and, you know, we have to juggle him being gone, me being gone, and also a nonprofit that is so much needed in the community and the pressure that comes with that. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge and it's a, it's a little bit of a struggle um, just trying to make sure we're not feel like I'm I'm neglecting anyone Mm -hmm. right or any person or even myself and so it's it's something that you know I don't know that that will ever go away from me um but I also know at the same time that I'm doing what fuels my soul Mm -hmm. and what I'm very passionate about and I hope that my daughter will see that and um see that it's not that I can't be a good mom it's that I'm doing really good things for the community so yeah, it's such an interesting conversation with every woman that I talk to about that balance of motherhood mm-hmm. because it really just ebbs and flows and there's so many different seasons in it. And mm-hmm. and the one thing that I think holds true with every woman that I've ever talked to, whether on the podcast or not, is there's always kind of like this little bit of guilt because mm-hmm. I feel like we are wired to always want to be there. Yes. And it's just not possible. Yeah. I think it's a very unrealistic expectation that we put mm-hmm. on ourselves. Mm-hmm. So interesting to me. Yes. Yep. We definitely can be our, our own worst enemy in that oh. aspect. So. Yeah. As somebody, especially someone that performs like you do because mm-hmm. your expectations are so high. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, with my daughter, um, so I volunteer with Cascade Fire Department up where we have our lake property. And um, I just see how what I'm doing, she sees that um, mm-hmm. because she pays attention to fire trucks and and uh, ambulances and she thinks all that stuff is really cool. So, you know, I have to remind myself that I'm setting a good example for her to be involved in the community through everything and, mm-hmm. and it's okay. And these days iPads are sometimes more important than hanging out with mom anyway, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> And what an amazing example you're setting for her in all of the things that a woman can do. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Super powerful. It is. So one of the questions that um, I always ask my guests is, do you have a podcast or a book that you recommend on a regular basis? I would recommend Emotional Intelligence 2.0. And um, the reason why I recommend that is because it's a book that you could pick up at any time and be able to go to a certain section of it and help you. That will give you strategies to help you be more aware of what you're experiencing. So I'll just give an example. I have a friend, she was going through a divorce and a really yucky custody battle. And she took a trip after it was all said and done to Hawaii. And she's sitting on the beach and she's got the book and she's got her toes painted. And, you know, the scenery is amazing. And she sends me a picture and says, OMG, have you ever read this book? It is so speaking to me right now. I've read it before, but it never really made sense until I was actually caught up in all the emotions that I've been experiencing. And I said, well, yes, yes, I have. I actually am a trainer of that material. And 
So when she came back, she said, okay, I need you to help me. Um, and she since has picked up, picked up that book a couple of times, and I even do too as well. It just helps me come back to the center ground when I'm trying to figure out how do I handle some, such a strong emotion that I might be feeling mm -hmm. um, to better, to, to make sure I don't do something that I shouldn't do or make um, bad decisions. Uh, but it's, it's a really great book because it has 66 strategies in it, and it has something for everyone. It's not personal or professional. It's both. Mm -hmm. Because emotions happen all day, every day. I mean, we've probably had several emotions just even sitting here mm -hmm. talking to each other. So it's it's one of my favorite books. And I'm just such a firm believer in being more aware of your emotions and other people's too. That's, no one's ever recommended that book. Awesome. So, yeah. I'm a first. <laughs> I may be a little biased because I'm a trainer, <laughs> a but uh, yeah, yeah. So what am I not asking? What, what, you have so much wisdom. I don't even honestly know which direction to go with you sometimes. I, as <laughs> I'll say this, as I walked into the studio today, you're giving business advice to our videographer. Like, yeah. and I find that with you a lot, that when I'm walking into situations you're talking about, and such such varying things too. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of questions I could ask you. But just to kind of give you an idea, the demographic of our listeners, we have women that are aspiring to make six figures. So the emotional intelligence piece obviously is huge in that. Mm -hmm. And then we have those would be that would be more our counterparts that just kind of listen in because it's women they can relate to. So mm -hmm. what what would you say um, maybe give one thing that you think would be beneficial to one of those groups you have wisdom on. I would say, um, you know, you really have to you really have to follow your heart and follow what fuels your soul and do the things that you want to do and not really think about what everybody else thinks because we're good at that. We're really good at wanting to consider what everybody else thinks. Mm -hmm. And um, you just can't do that in order to be be able to follow your dreams and and what you want to do. Um, when you mentioned, you know, where I was giving advice as I was, you know, waiting in, mm -hmm. in the waiting room, um, you know, I learned very early on in in my career and also from my experience growing up that in order for me to 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 be successful, I have to help everybody around me be successful. And it doesn't have to be somebody that I know. It has to be, I, I just want to be giving all the time because there was a lot of times in my career and in my life, and I mean to this day, that people are always so giving and um, I, I can't thank them enough. And so the only way that I can thank other people for giving to me is to just continue to give to others wherever I can, whenever I can. Yeah, you're so. very, very good at that. Oh, yeah. Well, I know how it made me feel and um, when people were, were there for me. And, you know, I, it's just very important for me. Self-belonging is is the personal value that I, I adore the most. And so when I um, think about self-belonging as my personal value, I always think about how other people want to feel like they belong or they're part of a conversation or they're being seen or they're being heard. Mm -hmm. So that's powerful. Okay. So last question, mom tip. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best mom tip? <laughs> if the popsicle party at the school auction costs $75, pay it because <laughs> it's going to pay off with your daughter. Uh, she is so excited and I won't, she won't even understand that it costs $75, but I did it because, you know, it's what makes her happy. Aww. And, uh, you know, there's just some things that you just have to make sacrifices on. And <laughs> even if the husband is looking at you like, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'll thank me later. She'll be happy. And, you know, it's just the little thing. talking about this 10 years from now. <laughs> yes. Remember that time when we had a popsicle party? She already went to school today, and she was like, my mom won. My mom. She's telling all her friends, we're going to have a popsicle party. So it's exciting. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. $75 for a three box, $3, $3 box of popsicles. Oh it's totally worth it. So. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Thank yeah. you for doing this with me. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you for allowing me to ask you questions absolutely. and stealing some of your time away. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's been it. really great getting to know you as well over the last um, year. It's just been really awesome. So I, I appreciate you being part of my community and um, continuing to to ping me to come yeah. and hang out with you. It's been a lot of fun today. And Thank I made you. some new friends too as well. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. You betcha.